Hello, I'm back. Haven't done one of these in like a year. Honestly, I'm sorry. Things have happened for sure, but I don't want to spend time on excuses. What matters is, I'm back, I was hard at work, and Soulful Memories Alchemist gets the next release very soon, in late July, early August at most. If you're one of my old fans, that should be good news for you. And if you're new here, then hi. I'm making a roguelike, and I have a bunch of videos here that you can watch if you're interested. And whether old or new, you can go ahead and wish this the game so you don't miss the release. But if you need more convincing, then boy do I have things to show you. The last video ended with a teaser. You finish the whole quest to make the elixir of youth, yet you can't use it yourself. But there still might be some other use. And here they are. Firstly, our boy Ricardo. He deserved something nice for all his help, didn't he? After you give him the elixir of youth, he offers to sell you some, as he puts it, lost and found items. These vary day to day and include a lot of rare materials and even books. At this point in the game, most players would accumulate quite a wealth, and only spending it on firewood and alcohol was indeed boring. Now you will always have something to look forward to among Ricardo's wares. Secondly, there is the old cartographer. And before I continue, I must elaborate that you can, of course, brew more than one elixir. It costs an arm and a leg to brew one, but so long as you have the resources, the game won't limit you. The cartographer, after drinking the potion, becomes young again, and can teach you map making. And here is where a completely new mechanic comes in. Now, when exploring the wilderness, you will occasionally find map fragments. And with this quest completed, you can turn them into full maps that open up all new areas when read, all of which are more demanding and more rewarding than the areas before. Let's have a look. This is the Fey Lake, a serene lake with an island in the middle. You only need to traverse the water to reach it. And how will you do that? With a new portion of floating, of course. One of the new recipes that you can find within tier 2 areas that lets you traverse over pits and water without the need to stick to walls like the Gekka Potion. And it muffles your footsteps as well, since you're floating in the air and not walking. And while we're here at the lake, look how the light glimmers on the water. It's not a new addition to the game from the last months. As you reach the island and explore the forest, you will find both challenges and cool rewards, but the most important encounter waits for you at the end. It's a fairy that wants to play riddles with you. If you do well, you get a reward. If you fail, well, better luck next time. There isn't a trick to guessing right, but come on, I wrote this myself so they can't be that difficult. This area is a pirate's grave, in the middle of the swamps. What better time for me than now to point out that the swamps have new music now, and it's dynamic just like the one in the dungeons. Go visit Ridley's channel if you like it. The man did almost all the music for my game. The pirate's grave itself is a dungeon full of traps. Pirates, you know. With ghouls as a new threat and shadow clouds blocking the way, strangling you if you pass through. There is of course a potion to deal with this, and it's a new shadow bane potion that destroys clouds of shadow when thrown or gives you immunity to shadow's attacks when drank. As is the tradition with pirates, the grave is a death trap. One sarcophagus contains the treasure while the other two explode in your face if you touch them. The pirate isn't so generous as to provide clues. Why would he? But completely unrelatedly, there is another new item I'd like to showcase. Whispering Candle. This little ASMR tool whispers pieces of conversations that happened in the past. They vary from area to area, and there is a lot of them. Believe the person that had to write all that text. There is a lot. If you want some hidden lore, you are going to love the candle. If you'd rather get useful advice, uh, you will only love it sometimes. Now, this place is entirely unique. 
It's a burned down forest filled with alien creatures and plants like exploding fireflies and scorching nettle, as well as sea fruits, made of pure fire and invulnerable to physical attacks. There is a massive tower in the middle of the forest, with even more fire inside, and at the very top there is a portal to the fire dimension. What remains of the tower's former owner lies underneath the portal, and you could reach it after the portal shuts down. There is a control panel, but it won't react to just anyone, and that's where the fourth new potion comes in, King's Blood Simulacrum, that tricks magical constructs to believe that you are the king. This is far from the only one that functions like that, either so be mindful of strange statues and the like. Finally, there's these old mines, with all kinds of underground hazards, new centipedes that rely on sound instead of sight, abandoned equipment to find, and or veins to loot, plus a little treat at the end. Of course, there's more to each of the areas than I just described, especially with prog gang creating situations even I can't predict. But I have to leave some surprises for when you actually play the game, don't I? Though new areas are all well and good, it wouldn't be fun if there weren't something to look forward to when exploring them. Which is why I extended the research tree with the whole 10 new recipes, most of them powerful late game stuff. Let me go through it quickly. Metal transmutation to turn metals or your opponent's blood into gold. Alchemical gold is just a meme, but the portion of blood transfiguration is deadly. On aerology, to get the dreams and use them as alchemical resources. And not just any resources. Look at this selection. Plus a portion to reveal large parts of the map. Venom arts, to make your own energy drinks and strengthen your toxin related potions. Mind Rot, to make creatures in fight while you enjoy the show. Do you know the stuff of Discord from Bro? It's basically this. Life Giving Flame, to become temporarily immortal. If you take little damage while under the effects of the Phoenix Potion, you explode into a fireball and heal fully, just as expected of a Phoenix. And finally, Flames of Chaos, at the very top of the research tree, providing you with the single most destructive potion dealing heavy damage in a large area and applying random debuffs, but also affecting material creatures and destroying walls. It's very strong, appropriately for something that makes you unlock almost the whole tree to get it, while true to its chaotic flavor, with damage effects and durations all highly randomized. The new research tree looks quite impressive with all these additions, doesn't it? Takes quite a few more knowledge points to max out too. And since I made the decision in the past to accompany every piece of knowledge with an actual piece of in-game lore, there are 14 new books to find. Look, I know that no one reads lore in games, just let me cope. It's optional anyway. Overall, the next release is pretty much complete. Right now, it's the playtesting time. And as always, it's hell. The game has grown massive, and a proper playthrough takes a dozen hours even for someone like me. I will put up another video as I release the game. The new version will come out both in Steam Early Access and on Niche. Again, subscribe, wishlist and all that. As for me, I'll go testing. Wish me luck.